Recently, there's been plenty of discussion about engine failures. While recent stories have involved a single engine on an aircraft, what would happen if all the engines on a passenger jet failed? If this should happen, all pilots are immediately trained to think aviate, navigate, communicate, in that order. Aviate refers to who's flying the plane and what systems need immediate attention. Next, the term navigate refers to the direction the aircraft needs to go in the moment. And finally, communicate refers to speaking with relevant groups, including air traffic control, other aircraft, cabin crew, passengers, and if time, the company. A mayday call would also be made over the radio. There would also be a request to land immediately and have emergency services available. The flight deck would then inform the cabin crew that there is a quote-unquote no-time available emergency. The captain would proceed to ask the first officer to restore the electrical power as soon as possible. The best way to do this is to start the APU, which is not normally running in flight. This will restore electrics but also provide bleed air for an assisted engine restart. The pilot would then start a shallow glide to the nearest suitable landing spot. Next, the plane will maintain airspeed by slowly decreasing in altitude. Glide ratio is an important factor in such an incident. This is the number of feet a glider travels horizontally in still air for every foot of altitude lost. Here, airplanes use gravity along with their wings and flaps to keep going at the speed that they were moving at before the engines failed. For instance, if the aircraft has a lift-to-drag ratio of 10 to 1, for every 10 miles of flight, it loses 1 mile of altitude. So, if this plane is 7 miles high, it could fly for 70 miles before reaching ground level. A Boeing 747-200 had a glide ratio of 15 to 1, and a Boeing 727 has a ratio of 17 to 1. Of course, the ratio is subject to factors like passengers or cargo, along with winds. Captain Chris, a senior Airbus A350 training captain, recently spoke to Simple Flying about the processes on the aircraft that he flies. We have a procedure for just about every possibility, and if there's no procedure, we use airmanship to find the best, safest solution. The A350 is amazing. In the unlikely event of both engines stopping, the aircraft will automatically start the auxiliary power unit, put the aircraft into a descent, and begin windmilling start attempts on both engines. Then, once the APU is available, it'll provide high-pressure bleed air to assist engine starts, Chris told us. Just like a car going down a hill, if the engine stops, it keeps rolling while you attempt to jumpstart it. We create the hill by descending. Most airliners can glide for about 130 miles. A quote-unquote windmilling start uses forward airspeed to spin the large front fan blades at a rotational speed sufficient for an engine relight. However, the speed to achieve this reduces the glide range. By utilizing the APU bleed air for an engine start, it allows pilots to select the best lift-to-drag ratio speed to extend the glide range during engine restart attempts. Notably, a real-world example of a dual-engine failure took place in August 2001 when an Air Transat A330 was flying between Toronto and Lisbon. Flying over the Atlantic, the plane lost one engine 135 miles out from Laes Air Base in the Azores. The other engine then went out approximately 65 miles away. However, the crew successfully glided to land at Laes after approximately 20 minutes. When you step on an aircraft, are you ever concerned about engine failures? Or is it something that rarely crosses your mind? Let us know in the comments. In addition to our daily YouTube videos, Simple Flying publishes over 150 articles and a podcast every week. If you're looking for the latest aviation news and insights, visit simpleflying.com. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe before you go.